Welcome to this presentation on creativity and originality. In this talk, you will get an insight into different aspects of creativity and originality from my experience and point of view. Using the example of the creation of one of my paintings, I will talk about experiences in the creative process and how inner processes become out of art and thus also products. These products, for example, paintings, gain a life of their own, which in turn also does something to us. I will describe basic experiences during the talk. They are actually not my personal experiences, even though I describe them as my own. Probably you know them in a similar way. The subtitles of the presentation is from the inside to the outside and back. The origin is inside. The first part of the lecture gives insight into inner processes of artistic work. And the second part shows what has developed on the outside as a result. In order to come back to the inside, we will look at some selected paintings at the end in the third part. Perhaps you will experience how the paintings can help us back to the subtle words. Most of the pictorial elements used in the first part of the talk were used in the process of creating the picture Virgo, Idun, giving the apples of immortality. Idun is a Norse goddess. But the principle she represents is something universal. All research and searching for solutions to problems requires creative thinking, especially the increase of mysterious diseases and their effects on society like the current pandemic is something which challenges people to be highly creative and inventive. Creative thinking should actually be encouraged in schools. However, research shows that teachers prefer the less creative children because creative children break rules as soon as they learn them. They are non-conformist and unconventional, in short, original. We prefer what remains the same and predictable to what is new and changing. This effect of choosing sameness can also be found in politics, business and research. But this kills the creative potential. However, the energies of the Aquarian age now unfolding accelerate very sudden and extreme changes. We must be open to all possibilities. Creativity and originality are closely related. Today, creativity is mainly used to create products in the arts, fashion, communications, advertising, and entertainment industries. Products and offers today have to be original and trendy. Those who present themselves in an original way on YouTube or Instagram can market themselves well. Creativity and originality are thus an economic good that is measured by financial success. The prices paid for artists' works are seen as a sign of their value. The latest stage of this craze are the non-fungible tokens, NFT, cryptographic keys stored in a blockchain. Digital artworks with such a unique electronic signature as a proof of ownership are being sold for incredible auction prices. Recently, a collage of virtual images by digital artist Beeple was sold in an auction as NFT token for $96 million. Is it a sign of the high value of such artworks or of a high grade form of delusion around the urge of profession? 
possessions. The managers of the business of creativity are called chief creative officers. Even if they don't openly call it like that, the activities of the creative industries are strongly driven by the driving forces of the masses, striving for glamour and fame through power, money, influence, and also sexual attractiveness. Such motives do not point the way inward to the true sources of creativity and originality. Creativity as an expression of spirituality or also for expressing subtle realities exists in many artists, but also in other people expressing their fields of endeavor. They advance into the subtle realms and draw inspiration from there for their work. One of the great contemporary artists, the Icelander Olafur Eliasson, has a studio in Berlin where people from a wide variety of professions work together, resulting in a concentrated collective creativity. In the process, Eliasson questions human self-reference. For the recent exhibition called Life, for example, he had the windows of the Swiss Museum Fondation Bayerler near Basel removed to include trees, plants, and animals. He said, maybe an animal wants to come in. The separation between man and nature was to be overcome. Incidentally, Eliasson was born in 1967 under the sign of Aquarius and brings original and revelatory new Aquarian thinking and action to art. Hollywood also often brings subtle realities to the screen, sensitizing the masses to spiritual themes. We can think of the science fiction film Avatar by James Cameron. However, when showiness and activism take center stage, they can obstruct the way inward. The origin of creativity and originality remains hidden behind the forms of appearance. Access opens up to us only when we become silent and look deep within. Words can only hint at the deeper reality. What counts is the experience. Without experience, words are empty. Even in this moment, we talk about experience. Talk alone does not take us to the sources of the creative process. Reading and talking about creativity does not make us creative. Talking about art does not make us an artist. However, we can try to understand the creative process. It is the same with spirituality, not by listening, reading or talking, but only by persistent rhythmic spiritual practice do we reach the deeper levels of our being. They are the source of every creative process. We can understand the way there through the wisdom teachings and the example of true spiritual teachers. Even before we consciously experience the source of the creative process, we can approach it through alignment and visualization. When I talk about my experiences in the following, it is not something personal. I use my experiences to explain inner creative processes. The connection of the galaxy and autumn leaves in the picture indicates a coming down a precipitation from heaven to earth. I referenced Idun as Virgo and Virgo as an earth sign. Over the years, I have observed when working with images, the impact of the source of the creative process and how 
through the process of visualization, a connection to the subtle dimensions is established. Visualizing and rhythmic working are the core elements in being able to receive impulses for creative work from this source. Friends told me they could not uh, visualize anything and did not know how to visualize. Master Maria suggests that if we can't imagine anything, we can at least try to guess what it might be like. So we can slowly develop visualization and from visualization, we then develop vision. When we attempt to imagine something, we can't see yet. We are actually training our thinking. For example, look at the picture and try to guess the next step as to how it might look. What looks like a flame in this picture here is designed with a crystal we saw in a former photo. Being itself is inventive. Of course, it is not spiritually correct to ascribe such a quality to the absolute being. Actually, I should say the entity entirety, but for the sake of simplicity, let's leave it that way. Being always brings forth new life and thus creativity. Being is creative. We see its creativity in the beauty of a rose, the majesty of a sunset, <clears throat> in the fascinating structure of a crystal. These active creative forces are within each one of us. They manifest through us when we participate and contribute by our actions to the unfoldment and the beauty of the greater whole. Actions of goodwill performed with mindfulness and love manifest creativity in beautiful and ever original ways. When I work with the images, it is of utmost importance that I am open to the unexpected and feel into what it wants to tell me in the current process. I get stuck if I'm not receptive to that which seeks to manifest. If I have concepts in my head of how it should be, the living flow quickly freezes even if I often don't notice it right away. I may notice it by the fact that the structure in the picture repeats itself. The freshness of the energy disappears in me. My concentration wanes and I become tired. When consciousness withdraws, thinking crystallizes. As soon as something becomes routine, originality ceases. Then I leave the work for a moment, take a short nap, or continue only the next day. Often the next morning, during yoga asanas or meditation, surprising thoughts come to me about how to continue the painting. By letting go, Thinking comes to a rest, and from the inner core, the next step can freshly unfold. I've gotten stuck in the creative process. When I get really stuck in a creative process and don't know what to do, I make myself aware that these paintings are not really my paintings but that they want to manifest themselves through me. I consciously offer myself again for collaboration with a plan for creating of the picture. Then usually and shortly afterwards, something new, fresh and somehow surprising comes in. When working on the painting, I suddenly saw this statue of Idun from 18th 
58 by Hermann Willem Bissen, a Danish artist in my collection of materials and new Idun would be in the center of the next picture. In Norse mythology, Idun is a goddess of immortality. She guards the golden apples that gives the gods back their lost eternal youth and immortality. We are these gods who have lost our eternal youth with the material bodies, and we are able to discover it again by returning to the spiritual. The symbolic meaning of Idun offering the apples of immortality is like a reversal of the story of the temptation of Adam and Eve. By eating the apple, the humans lost paradise to develop the experience of the material world. Idun offers the divine apples so that we regain the experience of immortality. I feel that the process of creation and also the image do not belong to me, but I help to let the image to emerge. I receive, I do not create. Therefore, I do not sign any of the pictures directly for the sake of convention only on the back of prints. I always offer the process of the work with the pictures to the divine. The inner attitude of offering is of utmost importance. I always ask at the beginning of the inner preparation for the next picture, whether I should continue working or whether it is now finished. I listen and then there is the answer, the certainty, like a silent voice, that it will continue, that is not for me, but for the inspiration of the people who will one day see the picture, and that something new and beautiful will unfold, like a new flower. This is like receiving the subtle impulse that is there long before anything inwardly begins to concretize. It is not an image. It is more like an energy center. It guides me and gives me certainty that a new image will come soon. It is not a belief. It is not a vision. And it continually pushes me to seek. After that, it usually takes a longer period of preparation until the circumstances are right and there is some time available in the constant stream of everyday work. This time of inner pregnancy is usually characterized by a subtle restlessness. Something is pressing inside me, but I cannot express it clearly. I don't see it. I don't know what it will be. Something wants to come forth, but I don't know exactly what, when, and how. But mostly, I feel the when subtly approaching. This uncertainty is sometimes unpleasant. I often ask, is it coming this week? No, no time yet. Other things still need to be done. Next week? At some point, I know it's time to begin. I begin working on the computer. When I'm inwardly awake and open, things fall into me, are impressed upon me. I see the elements coming to me that I need for the creative process. It is not the material that is essential, even it is, if it is necessary for the work. It is what shows up through the material. It is an alchemical transformational process where the elements merge into the whole of the new image. While in the 80s, I experimented with different materials and formats. 
I now want to work with as little physical material as possible and always use the same format structure in different sizes. After a long break of 19 years, during which I could not paint anything, and during an intense crisis, the gate of the inner creativity opened again in 2009. The first attempts continued with the old way of working, which I had chosen up to up until 1990, but it no longer satisfied me. It had to become lighter and also take up less space. In the age of Aquarius, all matter becomes lighter. Aquarius is an air sign. Digital art fascinated me in its early days, but the purely digital was not my approach. Eventually, digitality became a central tool for me for my new phase of artistic expression. I use it in an artisanal way. The new style quickly developed a mixture of the physical and the ethereal. I combine crayons and aquarel paper with digital image processing, also a scanner and color printer. Even though I use various photographic elements of objects, colors, people, and nature for the work, they undergo an alchemical transformation process where the elements give up their intrinsic nature. For example, their color is transformed, their forms that merge with other forms, and they are all then absorbed into the whole of the new image. There are several filtering processes involved, assembling the shapes in Photoshop, printing and editing on paper, scanning this intermediate image, further editing and cleaning <clears throat> with a computer, modulating the prints until the details appear right and begin to radiate and shine. This image here is the final form. We will see more details of the creation and appearance of this glow or shine. Even if I am present step by step in the process of creation of the new images, as it happens through me, I have been observing in detail for many years how something emerges from the source that was not there before. It always remains surprising for me what emerges and how it emerges. It is like the arrival of a gift. The image comes from the source of creativity and it is such a beautiful and sacred thing. All my paintings are therefore sacred by their very nature. I call them images of synthesis. The work coming out of the creative source is never completely new. Even a new creation emerges from the seeds of a previous creation. And yet it is not a repetition, but contains something fresh. Otherwise the creation would be only an eternal return of the same. So it is also with the emergence of new paintings. Creating the paintings is part of my spiritual discipline. The paintings emerge in this. I do not call myself an artist or a painter. It is better not to define oneself and get caught up in the related concepts. Working for the birth of the paintings is only a small part of the activities I do. I never did paintings for my living. For 12 years now, I create every month a picture 
representing the spiritual essence of each of the 12 zodiacal signs. It is a rhythmic work. No picture is the a repetition of an earlier one, even if certain themes appear transformed anew. It is always something fresh and it is a ritual. Most of my paintings, 172 created since 2009, draw from the symbolic language of spiritual astrology as given by Master Ikei, Dr. Ekirala Krishnamacharya, and Master KPK, Dr. K. Pavati Kumar, especially from the book of Master K on spiritual astrology, which is very deep. I always read the chapter on the corresponding zodiacal sign in preparation for a painting. But then it is not a painting of this sign in symbolic language. It expresses a new vision, which is in harmony with the elements of the given symbolic language. After, finish, oh, wait. After finishing a picture, I always look for the text excerpts from the teachings that corresponds to the meaning of the new picture. It is like verifying the image's message with an aspect of the wisdom teachings. The text and image are then published in the Weisak newsletter. It is a monthly magazine of the word Chita Trust about teachings of the masters of wisdom in five languages of diff, uh, and, and distributed globally. And as well in the Lunar Messenger, my monthly newsletter that appears on the Goodwill websites, Goodwill CH. However, I found that many people to whom I showed a picture to did not understand it. People who were not deeply familiar with the wisdom teachings and spiritual astrology felt attracted by the intense, clear colors, but the picture's message remained mysterious to them. The photo here shows the intermediate step of editing the printed raw version of the image. I realized to each picture belongs a key with which the viewer can open. Otherwise, they lack the entrance to an important dimension, which can lead into deeper areas of knowing. That is why I always write a text in which I describe the genesis of the picture and explain the symbolic elements. Each time I have to carefully think about how to describe the core of the message in a short and easily understandable way so that the key can be accessed and used. To make it as widely accessible as possible, the text is translated into three other languages. Shortly after the image and text are created, I publish them on the website lutgerphillips.org. Later, at the beginning of the corresponding month, they also appear on my blog and on two social media platforms. This is how the newly born image begins its journey into the world. The picture here shows a detail from the website with the painting and the description, as well as the motto and signet for the pictures, the stylized wave of life and the sun rising above it. Here, the face of the inner processes in the artistic work closes. In the second part, we will now briefly look at the extern ex external effects which have resulted from the paintings gaining a life of their own, and then look at what the pictures do with us. 
We talked at the beginning about creativity and originality, also in relation to the advertising industry and the art market. Master Kuma told me in uh, 2014 not to do any marketing for the paintings, but to let things come to me. If others wanted to, they could provide marketing. It was an important hint for me. I also keep the paintings largely out of the commercial sphere. The paintings were shown a few times at seminars and only once in public at an exhibition in Berlin during six months in 2015-16. Uh, it was costly and time consuming to prepare and I didn't perceive any responses. On the picture here, you see some of the paintings during the installation of the exhibition. I asked myself, is the physical form still up to date for these paintings? Matter is heavy and cumbersome and storing the paintings also needs space. However, several events showed me that the physical paintings have a value to inspire people through beauty spiritually. My spiritual teacher, Master Kuma, greatly encouraged and supported me to make these paintings as a visual expression of the wisdom teachings. The photo here shows Sri Kuma presenting the book Spiritual Astrology Paintings at the Guru Puja celebrations in Simhachalam, India in January 2000. Total fusion of East and West. In the background, you can see the picture of his spiritual teacher, Master Ikei, Ike Rala Krishnamacharya, and in the upper left corner, the picture of Master Moria. A little side note. For 40 years now, I have been engaged in theosophical wisdom teachings. Motives from this are reflected in many of my paintings. For 20 years, until COVID came, I went to India every January to Sri Kumar's seminars on eternal wisdom, where he spoke in depth for two to four weeks on cosmogenesis and anthropogenesis. Recently, we published a book from his 2005 seminar in India, where I met Chuck, and where Matkuma spoke about Madame Blavatsky's teaching on the seven races from the secret doctrine. We intensely searched with a team to overcome the term race, which is much disputed in today's world and used with regard to skin color and ethnic origin we replaced it by wave. In a similar wave to what I described earlier, I searched a photo for the cover, book cover, and found this picture with seven waves on Wikipedia, which we reworked a bit. The title of the book is The Seven Waves of Life, The Path of Human Evolution. It was published beginning of this year. The digital images can multiply as many times as we like. I consider all of them as original because they all come from the one source of creativity and originality. I never set prices for them, but leave it to the people how they want to deal with it. Not charging money does not mean that the images are valueless. I am releasing the images for free download, even in high resolution. The images can then go in any direction they want. I release them freely. The picture here shows the book, photo book created in 2020 for the anniversary of 10 years of images of synthesis. The book is available in digital form on the website. The images have already gone in many directions around the globe. Many have used them for different purposes. This painting here, acquaintances have printed themselves on canvas. It hangs in their house near Barcelona. 
It is called Aquarius, the twin gods and the downpour of cosmic energies. I saw it during a visit. The picture here shows my pictures on a website in Argentina with a photo and text from the Ludgerfilips.org website. I learned about it when the Argentinian page was finished. I was not informed before. The pictures have even been set in motion. A filmmaker from Buenos Aires felt so inspired by them that in collaboration with him and with the images, 29 video clips were created until 2020, until Corona came and he was absorbed by other work. May the paintings and the videos be a small, light-filled counterweight to other tendencies of today. It is a beautiful, light feeling. In the now following third part, we go more inside, back to the subtle worlds to which the images can lead us if we take them in. We will view eight paintings. I've chosen motifs from different areas. I will briefly address the themes and give a description of the picture. Although the 172 paintings created in the last 12 years are mostly related to the zodiacal signs, the themes of the images are often not astrological topics, but are inspired by various aspects of the wisdom teachings. The photo here forms a transition from the previous part. It shows a painting that is in the garden of a lady from Belgium. She's in her mid eighties and loves beauty as an expression of spirituality. She felt very attracted by the pictures and with great efforts had some of them printed and also fixed weatherproof on aluminum to be able to put them up outside. The picture from June 2012 is called Libra, Birth of the New Earth. In a symbolic pictorial language, it shows an outer and at the same time inner process. However, it is not the vision of the future of the Earth. The new Earth is within us. Libra has to do with the maximum unfoldment of objectivity. And this world collapses when the inner foundation undergoes a transformation. At the top, you see a skyline, brightly illuminated high-rise buildings on a burning ground, which is about to crumble down. In the depth, there's the formation of a new globe out of shining etheric flowers manifesting in a field of deep blue. A group of angels are observing the beauty with rapt attention. The picture came to me when I just got the notice of termination of my last work contract after 21 years of service. I felt free after a very turbulent time. I saw the old structures collapsing and at the same time felt the seed of the new sprouting, though not yet manifest. The second image, Pisces, flower of time cycles from November 2017, <coughs> shows a cosmological movement. There is a cyclical movement of time in creation. It is like the growth of a seed to a tree, bringing forth new seeds. The wisdom teachings explain that there is no end to existence. When a physical form is dissolved, it does not end, but continues to exist on subtler planes. With seven cosmic pulsations, the creation descends and ascends again. From innermost realms, it comes down to objectivity. And after a while, the direction is changed 
and there is again an ascent via subtle and causal states to the absolute state. Our Earth is part of a chain of seven globes. There are Earths in preparation in three preceding states. We are on this present Earth in the fourth state. And there are Earth in recession in three succeeding states. I illustrated this great pulsation with a circle of the serpent eating its tail, a symbol of the eternal movement of time. I created three semi-transparent globes on the descending arc and three globes on the ascending arc with a crescent of the present Earth at the center. I transformed a photo of the gears of an old pocket watch from Wikimedia Sachin Sandhu and placed it in a desert-like surrounding symbolizing the slow movement of time. <clears throat> From its center grows a Brahma Kamala flower, transformed from a Wikimedia photo by Shwiki, a mundane replica of a celestial flower growing at high altitudes in the Himalayas, symbolizing the sublime unfoldment of nature. I have painted other pictures to these great cycles of time. They can be found on my website. The third image, Arius, the sun cuts the equator of Mother Earth, December 2019, gives the view of the Earth in the ancient science of superimposition called Nyasa Vidya by the Eastern sages. In this, they imagine themselves permeating the whole Earth. They meditate the North Pole in the head center the South Pole in their base center, the equator in their solar plexus, and the Himalayas in their heart. They inwardly study the currents of magnetism that flow around the Earth and use them to purify the centers along their spine and to free the thoughts from personal influences. Likewise, Correspondences can be established between the parts of the body and the planets, the sun signs or the planes of consciousness. When our orientation to a larger system is complete, the energies of our system are rearranged in accordance with the larger system. Disorder is brought back to order, thereby one radiates and remains magnetic. The painting shows from an inner perspective how the sun cuts the equator at spring equinox on his seemingly journey from south to north. It is the beginning of Aries, and this is the beginning of a new cycle. The image visualizes the sun cutting the equator from an inner perspective. The picture shows Mother Earth sitting inside the globe and the sun at her navel cuts the plane of the equator. Inwardly, the equator corresponds to the navel center. Above and below are the two tropics. At her head, there is the shape, at, at her heart, there is the shape of India and the Himalayas as her breast jewel. The North Pole is at the top of her head. In the upper left corner, you see Mars, the ruler of Aries. And in the right corner, there is the constellation Aries. The fourth painting, Cancer, the descent of the solar angel into the body, is from February 2013. It describes the process of pregnancy from a spiritual point of view. Cancer is the sign of the return of the soul into a physical body, and thus it is related to the process of reincarnation. The moon is also the symbol of the generative life, which gives birth to forms. 
In the upper part of the image, you can see the moon and behind it, the glow of the sun. Two angelic figures, solar angels, observe the descent of a soul into the embryo in the womb of the mother. You see the embryo head downwards behind the descending soul. Another name for the soul, the I am, is the solar angel. It is the eternal part in man, which in the cycle of evolution goes through series of incarnations. The body is also called the lunar angel. It serves as a vehicle for the incarnation of the solar angel. For the left angel, I choose an extract from a painting of Franz Dvorak, and for the one on the right side, an extract from a painting of Edward Robert Huge, a drawing of William Hunter for the embryo in the uterus. For the illustration of the descending solar angel, I took an image of Ilmatar, the divine spirit of the air, by Robert William Ekman. The fifth image is from August 2011. It is called Scorpio, the dark mother and the consequences of blindness. And it forms an antithesis to a feel good esotericism that likes to close the eyes to the state of the planet and man made disasters. Spirituality demands that we look at the luminous and the dark sides as aspects of the one life. The picture gives a spiritual view of an environmental catastrophe, but it is also a warning cry against the effects of a reckless exploitation of Mother Earth. If the devas, the subtle intelligences, are massively disturbed, this has catastrophic consequences. I used the photo of the burning oil platform, Deepwater Horizon, which has sunk in 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico, surrounded by firefighting vessels in their futile attempt to save the platform from sinking. It thus becomes a symbol of human arrogance exploiting nature and thinking that they can escape from the consequences. I arranged a drawing of Mother Kali, representing the dark and fearful aspect of nature as part of the divine and integrated it into the image. The fire of the burning platform becomes one with the fury of the divine mother, an apocalyptic beacon of destruction, but also a symbol of one's own dark, unpurged emotions. I have painted other similar images of warnings. The sixth image from April 2020 is Leo, group consciousness, common purpose. It visually depicts the planetary process of the elevation of consciousness in which the aspirants and disciples participate. Leo stands for the birth of the soul into group consciousness. As, one, as soon as the soul in us awakens, we begin to live in the higher consciousness or group consciousness. There is no more need for us to limits and separations like this is my group, your group, his group. It is only one group of all beings of the universe. It is one entity called by many names in many groups. The purpose of hierarchy is to release the humanity from its concretized bondages and perceived limitations so that they can cooperate with a greater purpose, the plan for the evolution of our planet. This picture visualizes the joint orientation of the group towards the higher purpose. For the depiction of the larger group below, a photo from, of a group life at Mount Shasta, USA, was duplicated and mirrored. Above, there are pictures from, an on, from online group meetings 
fused together as an expression of the physical and etheric interconnectedness. A staircase leads the view to the globe in the background and there to Shambhala. Shambhala is the etheric residence of Sanat Kumara in the Gobi Desert, where the purpose of God for our planet is known. He is the regent of the planet, indicated by the crown at the top of the globe. On the left, you see the constellation Leo, and on the right, the glyph of the sign. The central axis was formed with the help of a photo of a galaxy. It reminds us that our system is part of a larger system and is aligned with it. The seventh image from November 2017 is Aries planet blossom. I visualized the earth inside the petals of a huge flower. For this, I worked on a photo of a Brahma Kamala flower, Sosurea opalata, transformed from a Wikimedia photo by Sujay25, making it glow like a lantern. I created the starry background with the help of the Stellarium software. The stars are like fireflies blinking in the darkness of a magical garden. All the stars and planets are the physical bodies of great conscious entities expressing themselves through these forms. Just as we have incarnated into our bodies to grow and to make experiences, these sublime beings also live in their planetary globes to undergo their evolution on a cosmic scale. All the stars in the sky are at various stages of evolution. There are planetary entities higher than our planet, and there are suns higher than our sun. Like a flower that grows and unfolds to bring forth seeds for future flowers, our planet also unfolds like a beautiful flower, preparing future stages of evolutionary growth. The eighth image from November 2015 is Pisces, Alpha and Omega, Omega in Alpha. It now concludes our reflections and lifts us into cosmic dimensions of the inner being. Pisces is seen as the end of the zodiacal year, which leads to the next annual cycle, beginning with the vernal equinox. For a disciple on the spiritual path, Pisces is the beginning of the cycle, since he moves in the retrograde direction towards the origin. In mundane astrology, Pisces corresponds to the end, to the feet, whereas for the disciple, it is located above the head. In the body of the yogi, it is related to the pineal gland and the pituitary body, which aid to produce light of the higher bridge to cosmic realms of consciousness. This light is the expression of the eternal now the fusion of the beginning and the ending of creation. The picture I received in meditation on Pisces consisted of two globes touching each other with a light in between and a head below. I understood the spheres of the globes as the contact of the past with the future in the light of the presence. The two touching spheres give the glyph of the sign of Pisces. I created it by fusing several photos of the Earth, the star Formalhaut of the Pisces constellation and a lotus. For the head, I fused a wood carved and a porcelain head of the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin, the female correspondence of Buddha worshiped especially in the Far East. She is the goddess of mercy, and thus a form of the world mother related to Pisces. On the crown, 
symbolizing the head center, she wears a figure of Buddha, the light of the jewel in the lotus. On her front, I integrated the bridge of light between the pineal and the pituitary, linking to the cosmic light. The deep blue light of the background fuses the stars of the firmament with the night lights on earth and the aura of Kuan Yin into one whole. A warm thank you to the team of the Theosophical Society Seattle that made this meeting possible. And also a big thank you to the team of the German speaking community of the Vatita Trust who developed the presentation layout. 